Hello, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning. Here we are noon on the East Coast. It is Monday, May 18th. For those of you who are keeping track at home, I know a lot of folks are. So uh, welcome to another week here today. We are joined uh, again by uh, Hans and Christy, who will be giving us some updates uh, on some things that a lot of you have been asking us about. So uh, I want to go ahead and set the stage for that and go ahead and encourage you, if you have any questions as we're going through this, uh, to drop those to our mailbox at live at Verizon.com. We'll take some of those. But getting a lot of updates, like I said, from Hans and Christy today. So I want to start with Hans. Hans, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Jeremy. How are you doing? Good. Thank you, sir. Lovely. Hi, all V teamers. Great to be back. I, I had a couple of days off uh, uh, up to speed live last week, so I was happy for that. It wasn't that I didn't work. I, I had some other uh, things to attend, but it's great to be back and share a little bit with Christy where we are and what we're doing. And, and today we're going to talk uh, about the next step uh, in, in this uh, pandemic, how we as a company evolved. And uh, the executive team has spent uh, a fair amount of time thinking how we continue to transition to the sort of new business as usual. Uh, and uh, that's a part of what we're going to discuss today. But let me start with what I always start with. I mean, we came into this crisis, which is a crisis that is unprecedented. Uh, it's uh, nothing we've seen before. We came into that thinking that we're going to manage in this crisis or four stakeholders make long-term decision that is possibly impacting our customers, us as employees, our shareholders, as well as a society. That was very important. And then we made our priority here, which also I need to remind us all because that's so important. And priority was, of course, the safe and healthy of our employees uh, and the V-teamers as a first priority. Secondly, uh, and uh, which is extremely important, is of course keeping the networks up, seeing that the networks are up. There's so critical infrastructure in these times, and there's so many of our customers that are relying on that is working <clears throat> for doing businesses, doing critical tasks they're doing every day. And ultimately, see that we are uh, contributing uh, to the society in a time of crisis where uh, the most vulnerable are even more uh, getting into a more tougher situation. That was sort of the framework we have worked with all the time. And a couple of highlights since last week, just to know where we are. Uh, we continue to do a lot of advancement on the innovation side, how we do uh, touchless stores, uh, how we do the innovation in the field, and we see it are doing better and better from a productivity. I'm really pleased to see how well we are performing in the front line in the very tough situation and, and where we need to be very uh, focused on safe and healthy and following all the guidelines that were out there. So that, that's from the network point of view, we had a network release last week that was on uh, several different type of uh, uh, news uh, outlets to talk about it. What you see is that we see a, a, a much more balanced view on the network. Week over weeks, very small movements, actually decline in several areas uh, or from the, from the peaks that we saw in the, in the crisis. The phone calls are coming down a little bit. Uh, what is clearly the most astonishing is that the mobile handoffs that was at the peak down 35% in the network has come down to below 20%. Uh, that also tells you that uh, uh, we see now more states in the United States uh, that are, uh, are taking away some of the shelter in place and people are moving much more. We still have certain states that are, have a very, very high or low mobile handoff number right now. There still are shelter in place, they're not moving much. Some are back to normal, meaning before. Uh, the, the COVID happened. So that's what you see from the network. And I can only tell you that the team with Kyle and the operation team and the IT team are, are doing a terrific job. I mean, the network is, is uh, performing better than ever. And I'm really proud of the team, how we can make that happen. As I said, we also are installing and doing a lot of, of great things there. So, uh, but another great uh, news is also we, in record speed, we have now uh, officially closed Blue Jeans. And this morning we went out with a press release. So all the Blue Jeans employees are now Verizon employees. So uh, you're now V-teamers. If, uh, if you're on this uh, up to speed live, uh, 
then you know you're a V teamer, uh, and we are really happy to have you on. And we see a great opportunities for a Blue Jeans in the company. And Tammy, Sampat, and a team of Blue Jeans are working out uh, now the execution and seeing that we are really making the most out of a, a great acquisition in times of COVID nineteen. So. That's really what I wanted to say. And I can also tell you that the executive team are continue to work as I promised. We spend time on the crisis, but that's Christy and her team that will take all the big work here with the resource page, following up all our V teamers that have been impact impacted. The, the, the leadership team that is meeting today, for example, work a lot with the scenario planning because we don't really know where the world is going. We work with different scenarios, what impacts it can have, what actions we can take. And then we work uh, in a third prong uh, with opportunities. What opportunities do we see in this? Meaning, how do we, what type of products do we need to accelerate? How, how, how are the other products that we need to de-accelerate in these times? So that we're continuing to do. I think that's important. And finally then, just coming back to uh, uh, what we're going to talk about today a little bit, uh, sort of return to office. First of all, uh, we have never closed. We have so many Veeam teamers that has been out there all the time through this crisis. If they have been in stores or in the frontline engineering, uh, they have done a terrific, a terrific job. Now we're taking the first steps here, uh, which is just going to be super gradual. Just to be clear on that. We're going to open up some offices over time, but it's going to be gradual. And it's, uh, as we say, it's not going to be a switch. It's going to be a sort of a uh, dimmer, you're slowly going up that we're going to take people in with the protocols and all of that. Uh, some of our employees, they need to get into to the office to actually perform the task. So we're going to slowly make that happen. In some cases, in some regions, it it, ha it will happen because they, they, they are in a totally different uh, situation that we are here. So we're going to hear Christy talking probably about Asia, where, where in some uh, countries there, they are actually coming back to work. Uh, but we're going to see much more gradual. And remember, we're going to open it for the ones that really need to get in there uh, uh, at the same time. Again, remember all, everything I said from the beginning with how we balance our decision making, what are the priorities. We're going to keep them all the time in our decision making. But this is just a, a, a step how we continue to transition to the new uh, business as usual. So by that, Jeremy, that was my short a little bit longer uh, opening than normal. But I haven't been on since uh, last Monday, so I needed to speak some, for God's sake. Exactly, exactly. Here's the platform. You can use it. I think that's your, <laughs> uh, your right to do that. And Hans, thanks for, for joining us. And uh, you never take a day off. Don't don't try to surprise us with that. So, uh, but yes, welcome to all of our friends at uh, Blue Jeans. Uh, welcome to the team. We'll have more on Sam Path and uh, Quentin, the leader from Blue Jeans tomorrow. But a lot of this conversation, like you heard Hans said, is uh, what's our plan for it? So I want to get over to Christy, who's going to walk us through that right now. Christy, good afternoon. How are you? I'm um, great. Thanks, Jeremy. And good afternoon to all the V-teamers tuning in or anybody watching this on replay. Great to have you with us. We have a lot we want to share this morning, building on our, our commitment to talk about how we move back to the next phase, our phase three. And really, uh, we intend for this to take place starting in June, but we told you we'd be back to talk to you in the middle of May, and that's where we are right now. Before I go into a lot of the details, the thing I wanted to just start off with was a huge thank you to all of you and our amazing V-team out there who have continued to uh, serve our customers and find ways to innovate and make living in this new normal something that we all can figure out together. So uh, as you know, we've laid out three phases. And so if I could, I'll draw up the first slide just to remind everybody what we've been uh, anchoring on in terms of our three phases of approach. Phase one was really January to March where we activated our crisis response system. We started in Asia in January, moving into Europe and uh, North America in March. Uh, and we've activated through that time period, making sure we had all of the crisis capabilities up and running and actively supporting how we would handle COVID. Uh, for April and May, we were really living in this adjusted state and we talked to you often through that time period. And as we look out now at what we expect on June through the balance of this year, uh, we really believe that this is now what's gonna be our new business as usual. And we wanted to share with you more of the details for how we're thinking about this. Uh, so if you could go to the next slide, we've had a lot of work that's been underway the last few weeks to prepare ourselves for this next phase. We wanna make sure we build on the strong foundation we've put in place to keep all of you safe. 
So we're doing three things. We're revising and updating our policies. As we've moved through April and May, we've learned a lot and we're gonna build on that and put that in place uh, and sustain many of those things and put new pieces in place to support the way we're gonna operate in June and moving forward. This includes things like our policies on travel and health and safety, all of our leave programs as shelter in place and other programs around the world are being rescinded and society seeks to reopen and return to some normalcy. Second, we're adopting new technology. We are building a, a beta application that can help us uh, reopen offices and allow us to engage with all the V teamers and have an understanding of and make sure people have good communication on protocols and safety measures that we wanna have applied in the workplace. Um, and also finally, we're gonna be gradually introducing access to the offices. As you know, right now we have had up to as many as 115,000 of our V teamers working from home or home garaging. And we're gonna be taking steps now as we head to June to pivot that more back into the offices, the stores and out in dispatches. And so we wanna make sure we've got all the right protocols to do that. So let me shift on to the next page. And these materials will be available on the webpage. So I wanna just highlight that, but as we put it into action, what transitioning to the next phase of business as usual will look like, um, not to be anticlimactic, but this phase three is going to look and feel a lot like our current adjusted state. We recognize that most of our V-teamers did work uh, in new ways uh, over the last two and a half months, but also we've had uh, 30 plus percent of our retail footprint active and our field technicians have been active and they're gonna continue to do so. So right at the top of the page, building on what Han said, we've always stayed open and we have been working the whole time through COVID. Our retail and our field techs have been on site at our stores, our customer sites, or our engineering and CO buildings. And we're gonna continue to that. Um, if I look inside each of these organizations, uh, retail, uh, Krista has on Up to Speed talked last week about the fact that she and her team are evaluating and thinking about how to reopen more stores based on customer demand and the relaxing of shelter in place provisions which force business closures uh, during that period of time. But we have all the innovations of touchless retail that will continue and have been continued to be built upon with social distancing, employee customer ratios, face coverings in the stores for employees and customers. And really our V teamers have helped us develop all of this. So today folks will hear from Ronan and his leadership team for how the next phase applies for retail. Similarly, for our field technicians and outside engineers, they have continued to work primarily on site. And we've had many innovations, whether it's the Texi application or new ways we've supported our customers through this time that we developed with our field techs. We're very excited about that. And we've got strong support uh, from our partners in the union to continue the home garaging and other protocols through June 30th. And we're gonna continue to evaluate that as we move forward. I'm gonna to go to the bottom of the page and highlight and talk about call centers for a moment. We have uh, a large teams of employees that work in our call centers and those were pivoted to remote uh, home-based for the last period of time in this middle phase. And we found so many successes from that. The employees report great learnings in that process as well as their supervisors. And so we intend to extend that for this new phase three that we're talking about. And so for the folks that are in our call centers, we intend to continue to operate these remote through September. Uh, and we'll continue to work with you and your team leaders. And you'll hear more from them later today for how we seek to continue to optimize this model and what we intend to learn from this. But we believe this is the best way, given the assets and the telephony and, and materials that people have to work from home, it would be pretty disruptive to try to shift that on some kind of a regular basis. Similarly, we're engaged with uh, our partners in the union where we have union call centers so that we can extend this. And we've got agreement to extend that through June. And we'll continue to discuss that with those teams and partners. And finally, in the middle, we have all of our sales teams and our office-based teams. And you can see that we, we intend to move to a blended model. We will continue to have a majority of our folks working remotely in that situation. However, we are gonna be opening access to the office buildings. We'll be assigning people to teams 
and we will have up to 25% of the employees able to access a facility during a given week. And so starting July 6th, employees will have a team that they've uh, been identified to be in group A, B, C, or D, and there'll be a schedule that's published so you'll know which week your group has the opportunity to access the buildings. And with the technology support I mentioned, you'll be able to go in and register that you would like to come into the office and we will have everything staged and ready, assigning you where you can work. And that will allow us to do employee support, contact tracing, as well as safety training as people enter the buildings. We will be starting a pilot June 1st with a number of people in this arrangement. We actually opened last week in Beijing and we're working with Taiwan and Hong Kong as well at this time. And we've got uh, another couple of hundred folks identified here in the United States where we'll partner to get these tools and protocols piloted starting June 1st. If you're in that pilot, you will be notified and in, 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 in discussions with your teams this week, um, as well as before the end of the month, we intend to share with employees which group um, they've been identified to participate in and all the mechanisms and things they need to know about safely returning to the office. And I think this highlights some of the complexity of this next phase that's really important that Hans and I share with you today, which is there are many different work teams and groups and ways in which we serve our customers, keep the networks up and running. And these are frameworks, but the information for how this applies to every employee will come from their local supervisor and the leader of their operating unit or their staff function from the VLC. And so later this afternoon, that set of communications will kick off and carry forward and the framework and the updated policies will live on the COVID webpage, which we're continuing to keep active for all of our employees. Finally, we know that there's a lot of questions and concerns about safety, and you know that this is a top priority for us. So on the next page, and again, more information to come locally, uh, but if you are in the pilot returning on site in June to the office settings, these will be some of the on-site protocols. What I'd like to highlight is for the retail stores and for our field engineers and technicians, we have specific protocols and measures for your work teams that we've already been active with you working under in April and May, and those will continue June forward. I'm highlighting the on-site office protocols because these are new starting now and being piloted through June so that we can scale and begin to fill uh, the office buildings up to 25% as needed. We will have screening for people coming into the facilities and the screening will be asking employees general questions about their, their health. Do they have a fever? Have they tested positive for COVID in the last 14 days? Or do they have other symptoms of COVID? This will be self-reported. If uh, the answer to those questions are no, then the employee will be reminded of the safety protocols on site. We will be looking for employees to wear face coverings to enter the facility, to move around in the facility. When someone is sitting at a, a workstation that they've been assigned to, they can remove their face coverings. We will also be practicing social distancing in the office and desks and seating areas will be a safe distance of 1.8 meters apart. And then finally, there are some jurisdictions, be it cities or states or countries, that have mandated temperature screening where that is the case we will have that as a protocol and an employee would receive training understanding how that might apply to them and then finally i mentioned social distancing so desks throughout our office buildings will be marked where it's uh, a location and a safe desk to use or a desk that's not being used right now due to social distancing there'll be sanitation stations posters places to go for help, et cetera. So lots more to come on that, but I know that I wanted to make sure people knew at a high level, while we will be returning to the offices with the rotating groups, we will be also implementing new protocols and procedures. Um, and so this will be our new normal. And uh, Jeremy and all the V-teamers out there, we expect these protocols to be with us through September. And we picked that time frame because we know that people were looking for some stability. And we also felt as leaders, we needed some stability so that we could really pick up speed and continue to enhance and augment our business as usual performance. And then finally, we also know that lots will continue to change between now and then. And so we'll have the benefit of all of those learnings before we contemplate what will happen uh, from that time period forward. So with that, Jeremy, back to you.
You're on mute, Jeremy. Jeremy, my God, you're the you're the god of the up to speed, and you're on mute. What are you talking about? I'm back to normal now. I want to make yeah. sure Chris, you got all the words out there, keeping you guys on your toes. Thank you very much. Uh, this is when the red sets in. So lots of good information that you shared there, Christy. Uh, to reiterate, uh, when when folks will hear from their uh, from their local leaders uh, about this, um, because like you said, this starts at the top of the PLC and, and works its way down. What what will what should folks expect? For you, Christy, yeah. I think uh, first of all, we have the web page will be updated as this broadcast is happening. And then at three o'clock and beyond, uh, all of the members of the VLC are conducting or sending communications to their teams throughout the world. And that will kick off a really uh, thoughtful process they've designed. Each unit has designed something with their team members. And we really wanna ask all employees to make sure they're checking in with their supervisor, their local HR team to make sure they understand how this framework applies to them. And remember, we said we would give folks plenty of notice. So it's only May 18th. We're talking about pilots in June and July 6th, uh, opening the rotational access to the office. And then you'll hear from specifically the consumer segment or the field uh, and network groups, how we're gonna continue to uh, find ways to support our customers in retail and in uh, dispatches through this period of time. So lots of notice and uh, plenty of time to hopefully have folks get all their questions answered. And we think it's really important at this time, we keep the two-way dialogue going we want to make sure we emphasize the, that we've spent all of the last two weeks landing on this as well as training up our local leader teams and giving them all the tools they need to run their operations locally. Good, Christy, uh, another question that has come in here uh, specifically around caregiver leave, uh, how will we continue to offer that? We will continue to offer the caregiver leave and we have taken the administration in-house. So please go to the COVID webpage um, but we still have a, a full team uh, revved up to support employees and any of those requests we respond to within 24 hours. Good. And you mentioned on there uh, as well, for folks who are coming into the building, part of that small group, they will be provided face coverings as well, correct? All employees will be provided face coverings by Verizon, and they will actually be mailed to employee homes uh, later this month. They'll awesome. be washable and reusable. And then for the stores, we also have some for customers and we'll have some at the buildings too in case employees forget theirs. All right, Christy, a lot of information. And like you said, all of that uh, updating almost live on the web now for, for our employees. Christy, anything else you wanna close with today? Well, I just would like to highlight it's Military Appreciation Month and I've got this fabulous hat here, a great shirt and a sweatshirt to match yours. And I wanna just shout out to all employees that as you know, Verizon is a huge supporter of our military and our vets. Uh, we're very proud to be number one employer for military and military families. And uh, you can uh, you can find on the web ways to, if you like these, uh, you can purchase them and the money will go to uh, military. Yeah, exactly. We're helping a uh, veteran owned and run business uh, with these. So we're all supporting these today. And thanks to all of our uh, V-teamers who have served and who have continued to serve today or around the world. Christy, thanks for all the updates. Hans, uh, as we're wrapping this up, so much information. You, you know, what's your, your kind of things that you want us to take back to the dinner table tonight? Yeah, quite a lot here. Uh, thank you, Jeremy. And thank you, Christy, for the work that you have been doing with your team and all the leaders. This is uh, not easy things we're going through here. But a couple of things. We are now transitioning or continuing to transition into the new normal of the business as usual. Uh, first of all, I mean, a couple of things that that Christy mentioned. The pilot is very small. There's very few employees that is going to be impacted by that, so we're clear on that. But it's a good way for us uh, uh, to, to get uh, testing the system. And some of these employees, they need to get into work to make their execution and, and actually supporting uh, the cause that we have as a company. Uh, also, Christy said, and I want to reinforce it, for many, it, this will just continue to look as today. You will continue to work from home, virtual, and all of that. So be very clear on that. We don't, we are not expecting any major change of that. We will do this gradually, staggered, very organized. That's what we do. But one thing that you, you, you really need to do, you need to refer to your leaders. Because ultimately, it's different rules in different places. They're for different buildings, for different groups. 
and your leaders is where you're going to uh, find your your specific information. And as Chris said, as we're going to finish this, it's going to come a, a, a huge uh, sort of rollout of communication for the rest of the week for all of you. And there's plenty of time to ask all your questions and all of that if you if you feel uncertain. Because as Chris said, it's a long time before we even start with the. Uh, teams and staggering and uh, and open up uh, the potential access to, to offices in, in July. So there's going to be plenty of time to ask the question and clarify everything. So I think those are important uh, important for me. And then, of course, it also falls down a huge responsibility for all of us, as it has done all the time. The safe and healthy we are creating ourselves. We're following the rules and all of that. So. Uh, even though there's a lot of information coming from top down or from leaders, we as employees also have a huge responsibility for uh, uh, adhering all the rules we have and protocols that Christy talked about, because that's what is creating the safe and healthy workplace. If that is in the store or if it's for the field engineers or if it's return to the office, doesn't really matter. It's the same for all of us. And that we need to do not only for our company, but for our society in general. That's our responsibility as a huge employer and as responsible company. So I think that's what I want to say today. And, and uh, as uh, for Jeremy and Christy, I also have the same gears, you know, uh, we have the pre-delivery here, so we are really happy for that. But uh, I think we continue to be proud of uh, wearing the, uh, the Verizon logo in conjunction with the, the militaries and what they are doing and how they're serving. Uh, with many other uh, uh, others in the for, uh, forefront and the, and the line of support for the uh, most critical things. So that's how I sum it up. It's a uh, it's uh, it's a challenging time. We need to come back to the main things. It, it is a pandemic. Uh, I all the time read the rate, even though you start talking a little bit, it looks better here and there. Still follow the rules. Where if you're home, if you're out whatever the rules are for a certain reason to make this uh, earth and this place a safer place we need to follow the rules and that goes for you as a private person and as a v-teamer we have a huge responsibility so that's how we take it on and uh, I, i'm looking forward uh, to be back on up to lie up to speed there later this week they're probably not going to let me here every day anymore because they probably think i'm speaking too much, but I'm going to be back, I tell you, and I'm going to have a lot of new things to share. So, uh, Jeremy, uh, that's the short summary I had for today. Back to you. Hans, thank you so much. Christy, thank you as well. And a reminder to our folks, you can find all the resources, all the things that we just talked about, uh, updating those, uh, like I said, live now to the resource pages. And like Christy and Hans said, uh, more uh, kind of individualized communications throughout today and throughout the week, so you know where you fall into these things. But a work in progress. This isn't an overnight thing, so we got to keep that in mind. And uh, and if you continue to have questions, you can know you can uh, reach out to us live at Verizon.com or the Ask Christie uh, mailbox that you can uh, you can find as well. So uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in today for this. Uh, like I said, tomorrow we'll have Sam Path and Quentin from Blue Jeans uh, to talk about that uh, deal and how we're continuing business forward as we're moving forward together. So I appreciate everyone joining today. We'll be back with you then. Until next time, you're up to speed. <laughs>